So something to note about New Game Plus is that when you first get to the Bastion and you can start building things, you don't have to build them in the same order you did previously. Like, you aren't limited to, when you first set off, just the distillery and the armory. You can actually pick from any of the six structures and they will already be fully upgraded. So, once you get to the second half of the game where you start upgrading the structures, uh, well, the upgrade wouldn't do anything normally, so instead you get 250, uh, frag 2,500 fragments every time you upgrade one of these structures again, not 250. should also note that in New Game Plus, a couple extra things get unlocked. Uh, first of all, there are two new tonics available. There's Doomshine, which gives you an extra 10% critical hit chance, but it takes away 10 points of your max health. Doomshine's a bit of an acquired taste. Like a mouthful of horseradish. And then there's Champagne, which uh, just makes all of your attacks do 25% more damage, but it also takes away one of your lives. Champagne's made with scumbag extract, hence the barley aroma and the nausea. Grava Gimlet tastes different the longer you swish it around. Miraculous stuff. They're also in the shrine. Uh, two new... Think the gods are gonna help. Two new, uh, idols. There's Rothis, which means ye, uh, enemies will never ever drop health tonics or black tonics, so... Uh, you're pretty much stuck with what you come into the level with. And then there's also Olek, which means sometimes um, enemies just turn transparent and it means that you can't hurt them. Uh, it kind of sucks. I'm turning all these off because I don't really need them. Um, there's also a new secret skill that is exclusive to the PC version of the game. Uh, you will not find this in the console version. Seen a lot of strange before, but this takes a cake. Some things just ain't meant for this world, but who are we to judge? You show me whoever made this, Zolf says. And I'll show you a scientific genius. Go on, open it, she says. The worst that can happen already did, right? Deep flying. Chromatic data overflow. I see a thing. Don't get her too excited now. No telling what she'll do. And the portal sentry turret also mentions Zen, which isn't a portal thing, it is actually the planet you go to at the end of the first Half-Life. Which I'm pretty sure just 100% confirms uh, that Half-Life 3 is currently in development. Why am I here? And also, the portal turret is actually a really good secret skill. It's like the other one that deploys turrets. Um, they only shoot at things right in front of them, though. Anything that passes through their laser, they can't turn like the other turrets. But they do a ridiculous amount of damage, especially when you have a bunch of them out all at once. Well, for the machete, the final upgrade, you either get 50% attack speed, which means it's incredibly fast, or uh, what I think is better is 50% more damage from power shot throws with the machete. Uh, since that already did quite a bit of damage, and was already pretty fast. So we never saw the mortar get fully upgraded either. Um, I think we got all the way up to the fourth tier. But the, for the final one... A pinch of fairy dust, and it's all set. For the final upgrade, you can either have the bombs leave damage fields, so once it blows up, it'll leave a field, and if enemy enemy walks into it, they'll start taking damage. Or, uh, you can just make yourself immune to the damage from the bombs. Uh, I use this one a lot, 
because then you can just run face right up into somebody's face and just blast them with it and then run away and you will take no damage. Uh, also with fire bellows, I believe I showed off the damage resistance while firing already. But for the final upgrade, you can either move faster while you attack, or you won't be able to move anymore, but the flames will spread about twice as far, uh, which I think is pretty good. And then there's a Calamity Cannon. Uh, again, you can just upgrade the recharge speed or the blast radius, which is the same as the second upgrade tier. And for the final one, uh, either rockets will seek out foes for you, or the rockets can also leave damage fields. Both of these are good. This one can be a little weird, uh, the homing ability, because it doesn't, it still doesn't lock onto enemies unless you, you know, lock onto them with the shield first. Um, and so sometimes you'll be aiming for one enemy, but there might be one enemy slightly closer, uh, so the rockets will instead seek and hit that one instead. But since it's fully upgraded, I guess we can go get first place in the stupid proving ground for the cannon. The Mansers conducted their most secretive research far east of the city. Only trouble was something about the place drove the windbags crazy. Cause a lot of collateral damage with her being careful. The more crowded it gets, the more trouble you can cause with a single shot. Also, I have Graver Gimlet equipped, which is why the kid just suddenly became kind of huge for three seconds. She's designed to be fine-tuned, just need the proper parts. I should also mention I do not have the blast radius upgrades equipped, I actually have both charging speed upgrades equipped, which makes this quite a bit easier. Well, that experiment was a rousing success. Well, there we go. It's done. Now I never have to play that proving ground ever again, ever. And it gets you another know, secret skill, which is Calamity Rockets. If only the Mansers could have seen the kid playing around with their favorite toy. This one's kind of like one of the uh, musket secret skills where you fire a ton of rockets right in a row. I guess we'll show that one off. Kid makes me nervous sometimes strutting around with all those guns. The Calamity saved some of my old books. Guess it's got a sense of humor. So with the DLC installed, you actually get a fourth proving ground. It does not appear the first time you play through the game. It actually appears in New Game Plus. Oh, those books ain't as bad as they look. This ain't about me, though you might as well know where I'm coming from. I ain't much for worldly things, though all these years I've held on to a stash of old books from when I was young.
There's one old book in particular I still like to read from time to time. It covers the important things, in a manner of speaking. You can see those lines are where the actual damage fields uh, left by the rockets are. Here we go. A is for Kobe, the goddess of oath and abandon. Make a promise, and the chasing maid will hold you to it. Now this proving ground's a little bit longer than the others, just because it goes through every single letter in the alphabet. Um, so I actually turned off all of the idols for this one, just to make it go by a little quicker. I'm also pretty much indestructible now, because I am max level, so I have 10 tonics equipped. B is for Breaker. He's faster than a fork of lightning, and his aim is always true. If news needs spreading, tell it to a Breaker. With all 10 idols on, this one actually is pretty hard, uh, because... While all the other Proving Grounds have only had certain enemies in them, uh, depending on what enemies were you were actually fighting at that point in the story, um, this one has every single enemy type in it. C is for Core. A perfect bit of stone found deep underground. It makes the city shine day and night. Is there anything it can't do? D is for Dreadrum, a potent spirit brewed from a foul-smelling plant that grows in the wilds. One taste will sharpen your senses. E is for Evacuation. In an emergency, stay calm, leave your belongings and make your way to the nearest safe haven. There he is. F is for foundation. A solid plot of land for building anything you can imagine. Even grand ideas start small. G is for Garmouth, the god of purpose and folly. The crippled duke reminds us that good intentions are nothing on their own. H is for Hensa, goddess of pain and pleasure. You can't have one without the other. The veiled widow makes sure of it. I is for In Case of Trouble, a song grown famous across the land, dedicated to the pioneering spirit of Ceylandia. Javel, the god of health and atrophy. We each have the tower keeper's strength in us until that strength runs out. K is for kid. 
A guy or gal just like you. Don't be in such a hurry to grow up, since there's nothing a kid can't do. She also mentioned that this uh, Proving Ground uses some songs that usually aren't heard anywhere else. Um, there's one that you only hear in the gramophone that started at the beginning with the guitars. Uh, there's also uh, Rox's theme. I believe that plays. L is for Lemain, the god of hope and despair. The Mason King knows that success and failure are all in the mind. <laughs> M is for Messiah, our goddess of loss and longing. We all are born from the Lorn Mother, and in the end, we all return to her. for Nordy, the bird boy, who's always there to bring a smile at the hanging gardens, thanks to his feathered friends. <laughs> o is for Alec, our young god of chance and whim. The carefree sun lives forever in the moment. The rest of us can only try. P is for Pith, the god of commotion and order. When the wakeful bull is calm, let's all do our part to keep him that way. She can even dig her way into rotten children's dreams. R is for Rothus, the god of thirst and plenty. The Gorgian host reminds us to always know when we've had enough. S is for Scumbag, a big lumpy old fellow who sidles about. He loves eating trash, just be sure to keep a healthy distance from him. T is for Trigger, the army's sharpest shooter. Take pride in Ceylandia's mounted soldiers. They risk it all to keep us safe. U is for Ura, our pale neighbors to the east, whose homes are underground. Each day we learn to live in harmony. for vigil and act in remembrance. The sacrifices of our forefathers 
gave us a new beginning here in Zelandia. W is for Weepin' Nelly, the Langston River's fastest little ferry barge. We couldn't have crossed that river without her help. X is for nothing. Stranger's letter in the mix. Yet even the stranger's letter has its use, as you couldn't have a mailbox without one. Time the morning stallion stamps his hoof. Somebody out there makes up his mind. Z is for Zolwood, a tough old plant whose gourds make great target practice. Whatever you do, don't eat them. Well, this is just about done. So I'd like to say thanks for watching. Uh, apologies for the updates being kind of sporadic. Uh, I'm going to try and fix that next LP. Until then, thanks for watching. The end. There's nothing after Z. Used to be one more page in here, though before somebody tore it out. Know what it said? of this book was about the author. Didn't say much, but the imagination has a way of filling in the gaps. This microphone smells funny. I just realized I haven't eaten in weeks. Oh, I dropped the page. We didn't get this far yet. Blah, blah, blah. Gotta say something. Damn nation, what am I supposed to say? I get the feeling I'm supposed to say something here. You find an old boot? Plant it. You find a rusty old pocket watch? Plant it. Find a copy of Terminator 2 on Laserdisc? Plant it. You find a pair of socks? Plant it. You find a Milli Vanilli cassette tape? Plant it. You find a mint on card original trilogy Jawa action figure. Plant it. You find an unopened Marvel Legends Spider Man. Plant it. Cave Johnson. Cave with a C. Why, well, I ain't never met a man by that name. But let's say I had. And let's say I had a bone to pick with the likes of him. Cave Johnson and I go way back, hypothetically speaking, of course, to when I was not much older than the kid. Now, for my part, I served the city in the war, as you know. But a man like Johnson, 
He got a nice head start. Born with a silver spoon in his mouth, no doubt. Making fancy shower curtains of all things. Till he earned more riches than the Grand Rail could all in a week. Then this man decides it's time to go dabbling in matters he don't understand. Starts making science. Make science. Make money. Right? Starts testing all sorts of schemes on folks looking to make a day's wages. Even I applied for one of them jobs after coming home from the front with a shot of leg and a mountain of debt. Well, Johnson had the nerve to turn me away like a scumbag at a cocktail party. I got my own start in the sciences later in life, of course. You have to understand that to me the sciences ain't about novelty or convenience. They're about safety, preservation, security. The rippling walls ain't just there to look pretty. Although I do admit they were pretty in their day. So while a man like Johnson was all busy chasing moon dust or what have you, I was busy trying to solve the city's problems. Why, the nerve on that man is like none I ever seen. Sometimes when I look around to see all the calamities done, part of me can't help but think. Good riddance. All, hypothetically speaking, as I was saying. I had never met a Cave Johnson after all. Nothing at all to do with a man like that.